Hey, what's up, my little sad Yo, come in and shut the door. There has been a bombshell report released by Wendy's former attorney, Kevin's current attorney, about what happened. Now, if you guys haven't been keeping up with my Wendy coverage, let me just give y'all the plot. Wendy's attorney, Kevin's former attorney, Kevin's current attorney, was banned by the judge by having any contact with Wendy Williams, right? And I said, yo, because of their ego, because of their hubris, and because of what looked like something shady going on, they're the reason that they felt Wendy, and one of the main reasons why Wendy's in a guardianship. Well, guess what? The other shoe has dropped. This bombshell report from this interview that the lawyer gave telling of herself lets, leads us to believe that things were worse than we even thought. Not only did their incompetence lead to Wendy be putting in, I'm sorry, being put in a guardianship, but baby, she and Kevin are the reason why Wendy's even in this situation and why her accounts were frozen. Y'all, let's get into this. And listen, you know I love to read in between the lines. And baby, I'll say one thing. It's amazing the way people tell on themselves and their lies. If you actually just pay attention to what they're saying. Are y'all ready for this breakdown? Let's get into it. But first, hit that like button. Also, if you could hit subscribe, if you are a returning viewer, look at the subscribe count. I'm close to 100,000. Baby, we can almost taste freedom. Can y'all hit that subscribe button? Maybe even notifications, share this video. Also, if you're in the Real Housewives of Atlanta, the review is up and y'all know I review it each and every Sunday. Okay, fine, I'll get to work. I just have to plug my own stuff. All right, let's get into this. And y'all, I will say one thing. Everybody in this situation is behaving horribly. Everybody in this situation is a vulture. But let me say, Kevin, Kevin, Wendy's ex-husband, this is my opinion. I'm going to give y'all the facts on why I think that he's the reason he started all this mess, being shady, and it looks like doing stuff. Yes, the courts are tripping. Yes, I do believe that Wendy's current manager business manager is nothing but a pawn. I believe that guardianship, I believe they're moving toward a conservative shift a la Britney Spears. That's why they're letting her wander around looking confused in New York City. But let's get into the role that Kevin actually played and how they actually started this tidal wave. Lego. Okay. Now, here's the thing. Like I said, the article reads, Wendy Williams and her ex-attorney shared a heated argument inside a Florida bank days before her accounts were frozen. Now get this, right? LaShawn is Wendy's former attorney. LaShawn Thomas is Kevin's current attorney. She was always Kevin Hunter's attorney and she was his business attorney. Now, as we know, LaShawn was banned from ever having any contact with Wendy or the judge in the guardianship case threatened to have her disbarred. Now, I was one of those people that said, ooh, that seems harsh, but there is something going on, right? That's until she sat down and gave an interview, right? She sat down and gave an interview about the argument that her and Wendy had inside Wells Fargo Bank, right? Now let's go into the stuff she's saying. She admits that she's no longer working for Wendy and she's remained on as attorney for Wendy's ex-husband, Kevin Hunter. When asked if anything uh, untoward had happened with Wendy's accounts before they were frozen, LaShawn said that there was an interaction at one of the bank's brokerage offices in Florida in January. Now get this. She denied there was any issue of financial exploita exploitation, which had been raised as a concern by the bank. She claimed, I met Wendy at the Wells Fargo branch. We went into Wells Fargo branch and we spoke to the branch manager. We told him what was going on. Now, get this. They all, she also said that when she says we, it was Wendy, it was LaShawn, the attorney, and it was also Kevin Jr., who was 22. Now, LaShawn said that they had, as of yet, been unable to get hold of Wendy's bank statements, which were being mailed directly to her New York residents. Let me just get through this BS, and then I'm going to break it down, because don't none of this actually makes sense, and we're going to expose the lies, right? You probably already see a few inconsistencies, but let's just get to this. So, she said, where was I? Okay. She said, her son also wanted to set up online banking for his mother while she was staying in Florida. Wendy said she wanted to get access to her accounts. LaShawn said, well, we don't. So then she said the bank manager told her, well, we don't do that in the retail branch. That's the Wells Fargo advisors. Let me see if I can get somebody on the line. Now, LaShawn then said, 
He called Lori. That's Lori Schiller. This is Wendy's longtime financial advisor. He went into another room and had a conversation with Lori and came out. He said Lori was, was willing to talk to Wendy, but she doesn't want anybody else in the room when she talks to Wendy. So Wendy said, now, now, why can't she just talk to me, my attorney? I can understand if my son has to leave the room, but I want to keep my attorney here. LaShawn then said, and Lori said, no, I want to talk to Wendy alone. And if Wendy doesn't want to talk to her alone, Lori said she wouldn't even talk to Wendy. Now get this, the three left the bank empty-handed. They left the bank empty-handed. Now let's actually break, get this, break down this BS because y'all, the lies, the lies, the lies. All right, let's start with the first thing. For instance, this comment, when asked if anything untoward had happened with Wendy's accounts before they were frozen, LaShawn laid out the following interactions at one of the bank's brokerage offices, offices in Florida in January. First off, let's look at this timeline. This was before the accounts were frozen. So what was her abusive ex-husband's lawyer doing to get, doing getting all involved in her finances? Again, Lori knew Wendy through all this. Lori saw Kevin's lawyer getting involved. She saw her son with Kevin's lawyer, but don't forget at that time, Wendy's son did not have power of attorney, right? Wendy's son did not have power of attorney and that lawyer was not Wendy's official lawyer. She was Kevin's lawyer. And because Lori's worked with Wendy for so long, she knew that girl was Kevin's lawyer. Again, I'm guessing that lawyer is the one that even was the one that handled Kevin's alimony, where payments go, all this stuff, ada, ada, this, that, and the third. You have to think about this. Also, if they were denied having access to Wendy's accounts, does that mean they went home and the lawyer drew up papers really quick for power of attorney? Again, not saying there's anything wrong for a son being power of attorney, but we need to realize that people from all sides, not her son, but this lawyer and Kevin's lawyer, and we saw that live that Kevin did. Kevin ain't never wish Wendy well. Now let's look at these next two statements. This is really important to pay attention to. For one, Wendy's bank statements, which were being mailed directly to her New York residence. Her son also wanted to set up online banking to his mother while she was staying in Florida. First off, if she was staying in Florida for a while, she should have had her mail being forwarded to her, to her new place she was staying at. It takes all of 30 seconds to forward mail online. Anybody that's ever had their mail forwarded knows they can do that. They can also set up a virtual mailbox, a temporary mailbox. You can also pay someone to go and get your mail. That's not an excuse. Second, you don't show up at a branch with a lawyer, your son, and calling your financial advisor to ask them to help you set up online banking. Remember, this was before Wendy's accounts were frozen. Like seriously, right there she's blatantly lying about the nature of that visit to the bank. And why would she feel the need to lie about that reason? You guys, why indeed? But there's more. She goes on to say, when they said she wanted to get access to the accounts. Well, we don't, and so they said the manager told her, well, we don't do that at that, if, we don't do that in the retail branch. That's the Wells Fargo advisors. Let me see if I can get somebody on the line. Now this statement, what were they up to? I'm requesting because it obviously wasn't help with how to set up an email and password for an online account. And why would the son think he needed a lawyer for that? Now, now listen, why? Now here's the thing. Next, LaShawn, the lawyer, gave additional info to the timeline. Wendy's son wasn't power of attorney at that time because why would he be the one to leave? Again, LaShawn continued to claim. He called Lori, Wendy's longtime financial advisor that knows LaShawn, knows Kevin, and knows all the nonsense that Kevin's always up to. 
Y'all can believe that dumb lie if you want. You can believe that lie about how Kevin is there to save the nation. And he's only been the only one protecting Wendy when the facts of his history with Wendy shows he is the biggest parasite, in my opinion, and the biggest vulture and the biggest factor for Wendy even being in the situation. Not just the personal stress he took her through, not just the alleged abuse that he took her through, but also the fact that even now when she was incapacitated you had your lawyer up there trying to do things and you were sitting there don't forget all those reports about her and kevin getting um uh cozy again and sharina's not threatened they were using wendy's love eternal love and devotion for that man that ain't nothing but a goddamn parasite in my opinion you were using wendy's eternal love and devotion for you to soften her up in my opinion, and so all my opinion, so you could get access. But let's look at what she actually said, right? Because let's refresh the memory to put it in context. He went into, the guy went into another room and had a conversation with Lori and came out. Lori was willing to talk to Wendy, but she doesn't want anybody else in the room when she talks to Wendy. And Wendy was like, no, 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 no. Again, back then we were like, well, why wouldn't you take Wendy's word? But again, Wendy we know was not all 100%. And here's another thing that I've been saying for a long time. If LaShawn and Kevin Sr. truly cared about Wendy and truly cared about that guardianship, why did they have a conflict of interest? Why didn't she refer another attorney? Why didn't she bring in an attorney that was skilled in guardianship? Why? Because to me, Given this information, it looks like you guys were trying to do something sketchy. And you guys were literally ended up burning the house down, trying to see if you could steal the china out the back door. Now, listen, I'm not implying that they were stealing something, but there was something going on untoward that they did not want to bring in a qualified lawyer that could have actually protected Wendy, the thing they said they wanted to do the most. But you guys, there's more. Right, LaShawn admits she no, was no longer working with Wendy and that she has remained on as Kevin's attorney. This right here brings me to my theory. Remember when the initial allegations came out? It was talks of Wendy trying to take all her money out of Wells Fargo into another bank or entity. People really didn't realize how much real info they reveal when they're telling lies. Remember the story was supposed to be that they fired Lori Schiller and Lori no longer worked with Wendy at that time. But Calvin's lawyer just admitted that she was Wendy's financial advisor because who you because that's who you called when the bank said they request when they when the bank said that they needed to be request what was done right that it's done through the client's private banker not at a local branch so they literally just admitted that Lori was still well employed with Wendy when this happened and Lori got fired after. Wendy can't make that transfer. Now, again, this is what makes this so complicated, right? Lori, and I believe the way the bank handled was emphasizing, I think there were racial undertones. There's a lot going on. And I'm not saying that Lori had her best interest in heart. And I'm not saying that that judge or anybody else. But I am saying that Kevin and his lawyer, yeah. Listen, this means that Kevin is lawyer. You were intentionally trying to circumvent her real private banker that still worked for her. And obviously the relationship wasn't bad at that point because you had no problem actually calling Lori Schiller. And let's not forget that lawyer handles all Kevin's businesses and business accounts. So my theory is that they're trying to, they were trying to drain large sums in that account and put it in a different entity that Kevin had access to. Now, I don't know how LLCs or business accounts work. Okay, I have a little bit of idea, but every LLC and business account has a different structure, right? Partners, basic, but there's, the intricacies are different, right? But I think Kevin's father, Kevin Jr.'s father, probably gave him the idea to set up some form of business account using his mom's money. Wendy obviously trusts her son. And let's be real, Wendy at that point, I don't, I mean, right now, and I can definitely see it, but at that point, she was definitely worse. She wasn't cognitively right. 
Right now, and I don't believe she is, but back then it was even worse. So it'd be easy for him to convince his mom to put her money in an account for him. Also, who really wanted to know how much money Wendy had in her account? Her abusive ex and his attorney that still works for him obviously concocted a plan to use Wendy's son for some shady stuff with her money. Again, you guys, this is all my theory. But the more and more and more Kevin and his attorney speak, the more we see that there's a lot more to this story. And listen, just because Kevin and LaShawn are wrong in my eyes doesn't mean the bank and the court system are right. But you guys, this is shocking evidence. And it puts a lot more things in play of the rumors about somebody trying to... um transfer large amounts, wanting to know exactly how much money Wendy had, wanting to know what was going on with everything. You guys, this story is still developing. I'll keep you guys posted, but woo. Oh, you guys pray for Wendy because she got snakes all over. And the saddest part is the biggest snake, the boa constrictor that's been squeezing the life out of her. In my opinion, for over 10 or 20 years, everybody's acting like that's going to be the one to save her. Y'all wake up. Anyway, y'all let me know what you think in the comments and I will talk to you later. Bye.